Hello everyone, Rurikan here coming at you with another video and today was the launch day for New World. In case you guys missed it, we actually live streamed over 12 hours straight of this game. Now in order to do this, I actually went to bed extremely early yesterday and then I woke up extremely early today. Because I was aware of the fact that these servers were going to be coming online at around 7 a.m. my time. So I was booting up my stream at around 6.15 just in case the servers went live a little bit early. Now, this live stream was actually a lot of fun. I actually got a lot more people in than I initially expected. We had well over a thousand people for the entire duration of the stream, pretty much, which was uh, pretty impressive. I did not expect to have that many people coming in for an MMO, but I think it was also due to the fact that a lot of people were stuck in the terrible Q boss. Now, this game was actually something that surprised me due to the fact that when I initially saw all of the servers that they had set up my initial thought was like you guys are really overestimating the number of people that are going to be playing this game aren't you but no looks like they were actually underestimating the amount of people that wanted to play the game because most people have been stuck in queues all day as a matter of fact People took it to Steam. They started writing negative reviews to the game because they were stuck in queues. And, and look, I understand. I was very lucky when it comes to that. And no, before people accused me of streamer privilege, there was no kind of like priority access for me, at least. I don't know if Amazon did anything for the bigger streamers because there were streamers that got access to like codes and giveaways and all of this stuff. This was not me. I didn't have any priority access whatsoever. What I did have was the perseverance of basically showing up super early and just slamming those servers as fast as I possibly could to get in the game, okay? There was no deals with me and Amazon. I mean, I signed up for the creator program of New World, but, like, I couldn't even get them to send me a code. Like, I tried sending an email. Hey, can you guys send me, like, a code? And there, were no, there was no reply. So I have nothing from Amazon. I did not get paid for to make this video or to do the live stream. None of that because sometimes you get people like, how much did Amazon pay you to make this video? And it's like, listen, for starters, if you get paid by a publisher, you have to declare it by law. You have to make sure that people are aware of this. You have to disclose this information. Otherwise, you're breaking the law. And if you think I'm breaking the law over making a video or a live stream for a video game, you got another thing coming. I'm not doing that. So, um, no, none of no Amazon interference whatsoever. It's like I said, I just got up super early in order to try and beat the queues as much as I could. And luckily enough, I was able to do so. Also, I picked a server that did not have like a very special sounding name like Midgar, Niflheim or whatever. My server is called Nav. I'm in the European server Nav, N-A-V. So if you want to, you know, find me on the world, that's where you'll find me. My faction is the Marauders, which let's just say that in my particular server, that is, was not the best of choices. But uh, we will talk more about that uh, a little bit further in the video. But uh, yeah, so I, I've gotten a lot of questions throughout the day, people asking me whether or not the game is worth it. And it's like, look, it is not easy for me to make an assessment on an MMO with just 12 hours of gameplay. I mean, people were asking me this within like me starting the game 30 minutes in. People were asking me, so Rurikon, is it worth it? And it's like, I don't know what you want me to tell you. I've been playing this game for like 30 minutes, right? And even after 12 hours, like I got a more established idea of the things that I like about the game and the things that I don't like about the game. But that doesn't mean that I can recommend that you get this game. So here's a couple of things that we got to keep in mind. This is a AAA game from Amazon, obviously. This game costs $40. Actually, in some regions, I've heard it costs $20. At least some people in my chat were saying, oh, in my region, this is only $20. So, but let's just go base price here, standard edition, $40. Because you don't need the deluxe edition. It's just a bunch of cosmetic stuff. Currently, in the cash shop, which I checked during the stream today, there's only cosmetic items. There's like six, nine different, like, layered armors that you can buy for your characters these are armors that are purely cosmetic they have no impact in the gameplay whatsoever there were no boosters whether of exp gold or anything there was nothing in the store when i checked earlier today i mean if they add something after this video you know i'm not going to be aware but when i was playing earlier today if you check my stream i went through the entirety of the store there was nothing there that would have affected the gameplay in any way. There was a pre-order. There were a couple of pre-ordered bonuses. None of these bonuses also affect the gameplay in a meaningful way. 
the only thing that you could say has some kind of impact was the charm. They give you like this special charm, but even that charm is like it's a charm that's got one constitution. I replaced it like, I don't know, 20 minutes into the game, something like that. So even that, not really that big of a deal. So nothing at all that is kind of like anti-consumer from the get-go at first glance. I don't know if they did something shady. Like I can only tell, look, I bought the game, 40 bones, logged into the game, checked out all of the items, checked out the cash store, nothing that is anti-consumer in there. So we got $40, no monthly fee, no anti-consumer stuff in the store so far. Again, if, if something comes out later, at the date of this video, there was nothing there. They have said in the past they have plans to sell like rest of the XP and some travel stuff or whatever that, to make fast travel easier. We don't know if that is going to be the case or not. We will see. But I would expect that a couple of months from now, that's stuff like that will most likely hit the store because they've made their intentions known. But, you know, at this stage, none of that is in the store. So that's kind of like just setting up the ground, uh, the groundwork for the discussion that we are about to have here. So number one, biggest problem with the game, queues. Obviously, they need to either add more servers, figure out the technology to increase server capacity or just do something that allows players not to be stuck in queue as i'm recording this video i'm actually stuck in a queue myself i'm in position 233 right now and i'm waiting to jump back into the game because i want to go do some more grinding i want to go uh grab some logs and you know mine some more because i need to level up my gathering skills uh, once i was actually in the game because like i said i was able to beat these queues by simply being there super early once I was in the game, the servers, from my experience, and again, your mileage will vary depending on the quality of your internet connections and all of this. For, um, you know, for, per, for disclosure purposes, my internet is uh, 100 down, 100 up. But other than that, it's got nothing special. I do have fiber. I'm lucky enough to have fiber. Not everybody has fiber. So my connection to the server, pretty stable. I did not experience any lag of any kind whatsoever. I am playing, like I said, on the European servers. Some people actually think I'm American. I'm not American. I am Portuguese. I just sound American because I've seen too many American movies and, you know, replicating the words from those movies is how I got rid of my Portuguese accent. But uh, yeah, so I have pretty solid connection to servers. No lag, no issues whatsoever. Like sometimes you get uh, item lag in some, um, in some MMOs, like in World of Warcraft, this would happen quite a bit back in the day where you would try looting something and it would take forever and would not loot. I did not experience any of that in New World. That's not to say that your experience is going to be the same. This is my personal experience with the game up until this point. So what is the game like? For those of you that are not yet aware, uh, I have made two videos talking specifically about this, but you know, New World is an action combat MMO. A lot of people have asked me to compare this to Black Desert Online. And you know, the, the simplest comparison is that the combat in this game is a lot more simple than the combat that you have in Black Desert Online. Because in Black Desert Online, you have the, all these complex combos that you can do. I've only ever played a little bit of Black Desert. There was like one, two hour stream or something like that. But even then I could see like, oh wow, there's tons and tons of combos that you do like, Light attack two times and then heavy attack three times. Light attack three times, heavy attack two times and back to light attack and press both the same. Like there's a bunch of combos that you'll have to do when it comes to playing BDO. In New World, none of that, okay? The way that it works in New World is each weapon has uh, three skills that you can equip on it. You can, you know, you can um, put skill points in more than three skills, but you can only ever have three active skills assigned to a given weapon you can equip two different weapons so you'll have access to six abilities across two different weapons you'll have to swap the weapons if you want to use the abilities of the different weapon and then on top of it you have whatever happens to be the basic attacks of that weapon so if you have like uh, say a sword and shield and a hatchet which is what i've been playing with right now then i have the three attacks from the sword and shield the three attacks from the hatchet i can also throw the hatchet i can block with the sword and shield and then i have the three abilities of the sword and shield and the three abilities of the hatchet when i say the three attacks it's basic attacks just your left click attacks and that's kind of like the depth of the combat at the level that I'm at. I don't think it evolves much beyond this. Some of you guys will be like, well, that's a lot simpler. Yes, because the purpose of New World is not to do 
just all this very complex combat. They're trying to do these heavy PvP scenarios with, you know, faction wars of 50 players versus 50 players. And if every player is focusing on doing like a strict rotation or a strict combo, then PvP is going to be a little bit harder. I mean, if you think back to even Final Fantasy XIV, they simplify the rotation of Final Fantasy XIV when it comes to doing PvP in order for players to be able to focus more on situational awareness, what is happening in the map, where should I be going, all this stuff. So the combat in New World is very much a, a simpler combat than what you probably would expect from something like Black Thirst Online or even Final Fantasy XIV. Now, like I said, this, this is because this way you can focus more on the PvP aspects of the game and you can focus more on other things. So New World is not just about the combat. You have the combat, you have the gathering, you have the crafting, you have the, the marketplace, you have all of these different things that the game kind of wants you to juggle. And due to the fact that you can essentially level up gathering skills for everything, so it's like, hey, you want to gather wood, you can level up logging. You want to gather ores, you can level up mining. You want to craft armor, you can do, I think it's blacksmithing. Uh, you want to craft weapons, you can do blacksmithing too. You want to craft uh, cloth armor, you can do tailoring. Like there are all of these different things that you can do and one character can do basically everything. And one player is self-sufficient. Another question that I received a lot today is, is this a good game for solo players? And from my experience, it's pretty decent because if you're someone who's a solo player that's more on the casual side, you probably don't really care about the territory control aspects of the game because it's not going to affect you that much. And due to the fact that you're not like paying a monthly fee, it's not like you feel like, oh, I got to be, I got to be playing this to justify this monthly fee that I'm paying. It's more like, oh, I'll, you know, I'll play a couple of hours today and then tomorrow maybe I won't feel like playing and I can play it today. So, Yes, I do think that it is a fairly uh, friendly game when it comes to a casual just logging in, doing whatever you want. You want to focus on, you know, um, raising your lumberjack, you can do that. You want to focus on mining, you can do that. You want to focus on crafting something, you can do that. You want to focus on, you know, raising up your reputation on a certain um, territory, you can do that. You can basically set your own objectives and do what you want. Now... This will paint the idea that this is very much a sandbox MMO. And in a way, it's like, I feel like this game is going through a bit of an identity crisis where it doesn't know exactly what it wants to be. Because when this game was originally designed, this was supposed to be a hardcore PvP full loot MMO, right? Which is going to be very much a sandbox experience. But since then, they've added like a theme park quest line that actually takes you out through the world and explains to you the story of Aeternum and all of these different things that most people don't really care about. Most people are skipping through the dialogues and whatnot. I'm not doing that. I'm taking my time. I'm your everyday MMO player. I'm not going in with like a full 40-man squad ready just like take on the server. No, I'm playing pretty much solo and chilling and just relaxing. I think that's something that people are kind of like appreciating in my stream, at least... That is something that I hope because that's kind of the vibe that I plan on bringing with any live stream that I do of New World, right? But, um, you know, I think the game is friendly to someone that wants to play in that particular style. It's also friendly if you want to go in like full on hardcore with a 40 man team or whatever. But, you know, essentially the game has been changing. It's been going through changes. And um, due, to, due to that, I do think that it has a bit of a, identity crisis doesn't know exactly what it wants to do do i want to be a pvp game do i want to be a pv game they've added expeditions which is very much a you know five-man dungeon encounters that you can do with other players which i haven't done yet i plan on reporting on that most likely tomorrow because i assume that tomorrow i should be able to reach level 20 which is the level at which these dungeons unlock as of this video i'm currently level 17 maybe i'll be a little bit higher by the time the video goes live because i do plan on playing a little bit but um yeah, it's like the game is um, is juggling a couple of things. Right now, PvP is optional, so you can opt in, you can opt out. And one of the reasons why I said I feel like I picked the wrong faction for my server is because, you know, something that I kind of predicted 
was going to happen happened in my server, which is I specifically said I think that faction imbalances are going to be a real problem in this game. And wouldn't you know it, they were a real problem because, you know, I start the game and I'm like, yeah, I want to play PvP, so I flag myself for PvP. Then I go outside and there's just like a bunch of gank squads from Covenant because everybody's rolling Covenant in my server and there's just like Covenant players ever. And I'm like, oh, where, where's my Marauder boys at? Where, where are they at? And there's almost no Marauders. And the few Marauders that are there, they're not flagged for PvP because they got ganked like up and down the street nonstop. So it's like most people are no longer flagged for PvP because pretty much the Covenant faction dominated the PvP scene at the start because most players were rolling Covenant. So the faction imbalance thing that I kind of predicted is happening in my server. Whether or not that is going to happen in every server, I don't know. As a matter of fact, I'm actually curious. If you're playing New World, let me know how balanced the factions are in your server. Like, let me know, oh, in my server, the factions are actually pretty balanced. We're having, like, these PvP skirmishes. Stuff is fun. Or in my server, the Marauders are dominating. In my server, the Syndicate's dominating. So just let me know in the comments section what the situation is. Because that is going to be some interesting data for me to, you know, basically go over in the comment section there. So, um, now that we've established that, you also have that theme park uh, MMO story. That was actually something that bothered me a lot when I went through the beta. And I talked about it. I felt like that this is a game that should go more of the sandbox route. However, I do have to say that now that I've played the full game... Having the theme park MMO quest line is actually not bothering me as much because you see, the way that I was playing in the beta is like, well, I'm not going to waste my time gathering and crafting stuff in this beta because it's a beta. Like the progress is going to get wiped out. Now I don't want to spend like 10 hours sitting over here chopping trees for skills that are going to go away. You know, it's just like I don't have that kind of time. So now that I'm actually in the final game, I'm just like, you know what, I'm taking my time, so whenever I'm going through a zone and I'm going through quests and whatnot, I'm not really stressing about completing the main story quest line because like, oh, I feel like gathering some iron ore here. I'm going to go and I'm going to go craft some stuff and I'm going to go do this thing. And there's a lot of distractions along the way. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for the fact that I was streaming, I probably would have fished for like two hours straight because like in the first two um fishing attempts that i did i fished up a treasure chest and i was like what i didn't even i didn't even know that was a thing that was pretty cool i mean it's not like the treasure chest had anything overpowered in there but you know it motivated me to do more fishing fishing is actually pretty fun in this game i like it quite a bit as a matter of fact they seem to be developing a taste for fishing in games which is most likely a lot more engaging than fishing in real life. I, I don't think I'd be a very good fisherman because I'm not someone who's extremely patient. <laughs> Let's just put it like that. But, you know, uh, I fished uh, and then, you know, I did some more gathering, some more crafting. And again, the main quest didn't really bother me that much. It, it was just something that every now and then I go like, you know what? I think I'll go do a little bit of the main quest. It's just the game in a lot of ways still feels very sandbox, even though it is at the end of the day a theme park. There are sandbox elements, like to give you an idea, you have these four starter zones that you can start in, right? But it doesn't mean that you have to stay in your starter zone. So I was basically looking around and I, as, as I was learning how the game functions, because I've played the betas and all that, but you know, now I'm in the actual game, I'm trying to learn more and more about the system. So I started in a place called First Light. Now, First Light um, was very quickly conquered by the Covenant. And I was like, you know what? I want to leave this zone. I want to go play in another zone. So I investigated the other zones and I realized that I, at least at first glance, it seems to me that most of the, um, each, each zone seems to focus on a specific resource. So maybe like one zone has better wooden gathering spots. The other one might have better harvesting spots. So I basically found the zone that to me looked like it had the best mining nodes. And I think that zone might be the bluffs. I think it's called Monarch Bluffs or something like that. So what I ended up doing was after having invested a bunch of time playing in that starter zone, I was like, you know what? I'm going to move everything over to the Monarch Bluffs. And now I'm actually starting to develop like my reputation and stuff in the Monarch Bluffs because that zone has more uh, nodes and stuff for mining, which is what I'm more interested in. I want to be able to craft my own weapons. I want to be able to craft my own armor. And this game enables you to do that. And I realized that... I'm most likely going to be one of the content creators that's going to take the longest time to get the 60. And I know that most likely other content creators will tell you, oh man, you got to get the 60 as fast. Like that's when everything begins. And to me, it's just like, I don't agree with that. I think that this game actually has so many activities that it's pushing you towards. 
not really even pushing it, but you just feel the pulling of so many different threats. Like, oh, I want to level up my faction. I want to uh, do some gathering here. I want to do this quest here. There's this side quest that I can do over here. And none of these things are like super exceptional or mind blowing. But when you put all of this choice together, what you end up with from this is my personal experience of the 12 hours that I've played is just something that's a very chill experience. I actually like streaming this because it gives me a lot of time to look at chat. So to give you guys an idea, for instance, if I'm playing Monster Hunter, I got to be focusing on the hunt. I'm not saying that I don't like the stream. I love streaming Monster Hunter. It's my favorite game of all times, right? But it's like I don't get to look at chat as often because, you know, if I'm fighting something that stuff like, say, a Super Rajan... I'm not going to be able to like, oh yeah, let me just uh, fight this Super Rajang and make sure to keep up with everything you guys are saying. Whereas in New World is like, oh yeah, sure, I can like gather a couple of mining nodes and gather a couple of trees and whatnot and do some crafting and 100% keep up with most of the messages in chat because it's not particularly demanding. And as a matter of fact, I think that for people that like to have a game that they they play the game and they watch like Netflix or YouTube or something. You know, I think that this is a very good game to do that. That's not to say it doesn't have engaging things. Like if you're doing, you know, a PvP faction war or something like that, you might want to be focusing on the game a little bit. Or if you're fighting a monster that's a little bit higher level than you, you also want to be focusing on the game because otherwise you're going to get completely raffle stomped. But, you know, in, in a lot of this earlier game situations, at least, there's a lot of, you know, time that you can be like playing the game and have your attention just wander to something else. It's very, it's, it's a good, like w what I usually hear people say, it's a good podcast game. It's a very good podcast game from my uh, experience, at least. That's not to say again that you can't focus on it and do more stuff on it if you really want to focus, but you know, you have that option. That's one of the things that I feel that New World gives you. It gives you a lot of options, a lot of progression paths, a lot of things to explore, and that's what I like. Right, I can just explore the world, do whatever I feel like doing, and just have a good time. And that feels like, to me, that is going to be most of the game. I could be wrong, you know, because I still haven't done stuff like Expeditions, which I'm very curious to try out. I haven't done any of the Corrupted events, because I still haven't gotten my Azoth staff, because I haven't completed the... Uh, I haven't completed... I haven't gotten far enough into the main story quest line. There's all of these things to do. But at the end of the day... When people ask me whether or not this game is worth it, my answer is basically, it depends on what you want. Like, if you want this game to blow your mind with innovation, this ain't it. This game is a game that, like, what it's doing is not particularly innovative. At least from my experience, sure, maybe some of the territory control stuff, that might be a little bit different than what we're used to in MMOs. But to me, as someone who's playing solo, it doesn't really affect me that much because I'm not going to be really having that much impact and territory controls and all of this stuff because you need to have like a big guild. You need to be a part of a big uh, guild that is also one of the dominant factions in your server in order to be able to exert any kind of influence over territory control. So I'm not stressing myself over it. And I, again, I think that is potentially one of the things that it's bringing that might be a little bit new. But even that, I don't know, because I haven't played... MMOs that are like super PvP focused in the past. So I don't know exactly what they've done. I always hear things about like Dark Age of Camelot and whatnot. I'm not sure if this would be something that you would compare to that. Um, but you know, they're doing stuff with territory controls and you being able to increase taxes in certain locations and whatnot. And that could be the innovative thing. But the stuff that I'm doing, I don't find it to be particularly innovating. I just find it to be in a pretty good looking package, right? It's like the visuals look good. The animations are okay. The actions themselves are pretty satisfying to execute so it's just i'm just hanging in there having some fun enjoying my time with it is it gonna last me you know months on end i don't know what i can tell you is that when november comes i'm playing endwalker 100 percent. and then will i come back to this later maybe depends on how much fun i've had until then but that will be something that i will report at a later date today i just wanted to give you guys like my early impressions of my first day i've been enjoying it I'm going to keep up with it. Tomorrow, I'm going to be streaming it again. Hopefully, I'll see you guys there. Hopefully, we'll get to do some of the expeditions tomorrow to see what that experience is like. But for now, that's going to be it. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit it up with a like. If you did not enjoy this video, the dislike feedback is important. As per usual, my fellow Iron Breakers, keep your shields up. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay strong. Stay safe. Peace out.